So here today to uh, give an update on our, our registration, uh, permissive fees and gas tax. There's been some <coughs> recent activity. Um, last summer or this past summer, the board, uh, as you know, passed the uh, uh, $5 permissive fee. And then most recently, the state of Ohio uh, increased the gas tax. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about um, that whole situation and uh, uh, try to update and educate um, a little bit on some of the specifics because uh, these revenue sources are uh, uh, pretty unique in the sense that statutorily they are uh, regulated back for roads and bridges um, to the specific counties. Uh, so I'm going to got an update here. I also have some key, uh, few key members of my staff here in case there's really, really, really hard question. Um, they can help me out. Um, so we'll start off with the two. Uh, the two revenue are my primary revenue sources, and um, I guess there's there's two kind of fundamental things that that I want to talk about, and um, that they, they may be in my, in my opinion. These are the understandings, the perceptions from the general public relative to um, transportation funding. So I think the first thing that I will agree with, and I think most of us would agree with, is that, the, uh, that transportation funding is an essential and, uh, function of the government. In other words, part of our taxes that are being collected uh, statewide, countywide, whatever the case may be, that the assumption out there is that some of that is then being um, distributed and allocated for roads and bridges. So, so funding, the government funding transportation is an essential function of the government. I think we can agree with that. The second part of that equation, that the adequate amount of funding is being distributed um, for that task, uh, is where I think the disconnect is happening. And um, I don't, you know, in this particular case, most people probably don't realize, they just assume, maybe the assumption is, is that they, they pay X amount of dollars, whether it's income tax or property tax, and that is all going to the government, whether it's going to the state or whether it's going to the federal government, whatever the case may be. So that's a reasonable assumption because they know they write those checks and they pay those amount of money. But the problem is, is that in this particular case, that these are the only two sources that fund transportation, roads and bridges in, in Ohio, four counties. These and these only are, are it. So license fees, which represent 70% of my revenue, and, and the Ohio, not the state, not the federal, but the Ohio gas tax, which represents about 30% of my revenue. So the takeaway here is it's, there's no property tax, there's no income tax. I'm not saying that the folks aren't you know, paying taxes, but the amount of money that's being attributed back to roads and bridges are solely from those two sources. So we may agree that this doesn't work, which I think we'll see in the future slides, that this, this, this way of me mechanism is problematic and there's, it's been, there's been problems with it, um, but this is what we have and this is what we have to work with. So again, a little bit of background on Ohio's gas tax. Um, the way that that is, is it's collected statewide and it's distributed evenly amongst all 88 counties. So every county engineer gets an equal share from that revenue source. Historically, we go back to 05 was the last time we saw it increased and that's when it was moved from 26 cents to 28 cents. Uh, unfortunately, um, you see this reoccurring theme here is that there was no adjustment for inflation or any kind of cost of living or any kind of cost indexing for, uh, in our particular case, for the inherent thing that we do, which is road construction. Um, those costs of goods and services are certainly going to go up over that 13, going on 14 years. Um, and so we have uh, currently Recently, Ohio's gas tax was increased 10.5 cents, brought it to 38.5 cents. Again, um, while we, that's, that's greatly appreciated, uh, there's a significant amount of time from 05 to, to, to 2019 uh, in between those um, adjustments. 
And again, no adjustment for inflation or any kind of cost of living or cost adjustment for goods and services. Uh, similarly, the registration fees, um, they're, you know, they're collected. Um, similarly, the, the last adjustment was uh, prior, prior to the adjustment that was made in, in, in uh, 18 last year, has you have to go all the way back to 01. Um, and so I will say this is where, unlike Ohio, where it's divided evenly, the, we keep all of these fees. So if a registration is made in Claremont County, then those fees go and stay in the county. I think you had just for those sure. that are watching today. Yep. Uh, when you talk about that gasoline tax, just go over just a little bit of how that is actually distributed throughout the state of Ohio. Um, again, it's collected statewide, so that 28 cents is collected statewide, and it, the the pie chart for the dis overall distribution is is quite complicated, um, but a percentage of that overall 28 cents which was in the billions of dollars one almost two billion dollars 200 million and this was this was a 17 number so around 200 million was allocated back to the county i.e the county engineers and so that 200 million was divided 88 ways so it was around 2.3 million dollars uh, for uh, 17 and 18. And so, because I believe there's yep. a perception there that based on census, based on per capita, based on how big your county is, right. is that you get more or right. less money. And so the Ohio, so the smallest county gets the same amount correct. as the largest county, and we're 14th largest, so we're up near the top. And right, correct. Have more roads than most. So the while the Ohio gas tax is kind of an even, equal distribution when it comes to that allocation for Ohio's. You know, there's a pot of, uh, within that pie chart, there's a pot of money that goes to the state roads. Uh, there's a, a allocation that goes to municipalities. There's an allocation that goes to townships um, and so on and so forth. But the allocation that comes ultimately back to the county engineers um, is what it is and, and it's divided evenly. Whereas the vehicle registrations, that is a population base number where the more, the more registrations you have, i.e. the bigger county you might have, the more the, the more revenue you would get from that and so that's why it's a in our particular case it's a 70 30 split some counties more urban counties i think you're going to see that 70 30 80 20 split um the more uh rural counties it might be you know probably a 50 50 split between gas tax and vehicle registration um so we o2 uh we there was a uh, we saw the effects of the increase uh, in 2017. Uh, the Ohio House authorized uh, Ohio to increase their registration fees um, some, what is that, 15 years later um, to, uh, to, do, to, to, to make this uh, a increase in motor vehicle fees. Uh, we went through the process in uh, July of last year and effective in uh, 2019, we are beginning to see those revenues come in, which um, we expect to be um, around a million dollars. And you, you've you mentioned the O2 time frame was the, it, 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 until this last $5 license plate permissive right. fee increase, the O2, just to go back a little yep. bit there, um, O2, the $5 was set aside specifically for bridge repair. We had 393 bridges in Claremont County, 157 of those bridges were restricted. Right. And the numbers that are actually associated with that resolution show that that uh, money that was being generated over a five year period was gonna result in about $15 million worth of bridge projects. Any, where are we with those bridges today? Did, did we get all those other restrictions off? Did we? We, we, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, we, we're, we're um, today, we, I've got some information. We can certainly uh, talk more about that um, as far as that goes. And, and I think that yeah. was about the time, about $850,000, I think, documentation I looked at over a five-year period was going to be used to leverage $15 million worth of repairs right. on 82 bridges. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the actual... Um, the, the language that was in back in 01 was certainly, it was an increase in the fees, which, which would be allocated to the, obviously, statutorily from permissive fees come back to the engineer's office to allocate, you know, for roads and bridges. 
and the, the specific target that that money was going to be used for. So I want to, uh, this is a uh, this is a finer point, but the the point is is that the money was to was not it was allocated to the engineer's office because that's part of the funding, and the funding was to be used for road and bridge projects. The intent that the county engineer had at the time, my predecessor, was that it would use it for road and bridges, but it's not to be, it wasn't restricted only to bridges, is the point well, I want to well make. One, well, in one right. of the things that I wanted to bring up in there is that it was, in the fact that it was even mandated to the auditor of state that it was to be accounted for separately, and it was to have its own account tracking. Well, that was because of the statutory, the ORC section of the code, but um, and again, I, okay. I, we, we can we can talk about that um, as we go through. Um, it, but I think some of the points that I want to make. I think the resolution of the county commissioners specified bridges that is where that additional tax would be allocated. Okay. So, all right, it wasn't necessarily so, the state law; it was the county resolution. So let's talk about vehicle registration revenues. A um, couple takeaways on this slide is we've got um, revenues going back from the last time that the vehicle, uh, so the, the, the actual legislation was, was put in place in 01, and so the revenues that we saw started in, in 2002. So this graph shows kind of a historic picture of where we're at from 02 to 2018. And I would say the, the major takeaways that I see on this chart are 17 years and we're at the same base rate in terms of revenue being collected per vehicle. And that the only reason why we've seen any increase at all is because we have simply we have more registrations in 2018, almost 45,000 more registrations than we did in 2002. So obviously safety is number one when it comes to roads and bridges, uh, but the other major component that my office is involved with on a day-to-day -day -day basis is economic development. So it's sort of ironic because the better job we do on an economic standpoint begets more people to the county, but for 17 years, I, we, we saw no increase into the base rate that those thousands of people that were using the roads and bridges and and the cost of services over 17 years this is 70 percent of my revenue so so the important thing to understand is i have a revenue source that represents 70 percent of my revenue it hasn't been increased in over 17 years and we were able to still progress and do and keep up did we fall behind absolutely but we've done, I think, an incredible job combating the fact that we've gone 17 years with our major revenue source. I can't even begin to think what you know some other operations might feel that how they would deal with that through that reality that a major revenue source would be flat or no increase in the base for 17 years. Um, so anyway, we're we're um, we are where we're at. We're thankful that. Um, there are, there have been uh, recent increases, um, but the reality of 17 years falling every year, we fall further and further behind because these, the structure that we're dealing with, is inherently flawed because there's no indexing, there's no cost escalating factors, there's there's none of that, and so we're challenged to deal with essentially the same amount of money over decades, but yet we're still trying to deal with you know a, an ever growing system and maintain that system so we talk about uh, the permissive fees and a lot of this is sort of um, a lot of things that we talked about uh, last summer uh, when we were talking about increasing the uh, permissive fees uh, so those fees began collections in, in 2019 it's estimated to uh, bring in a, a million dollars as a result, um, the first quarter numbers are in, and it's tracking more like 900,000, so not quite a million. Um, obviously, it was pledged for the road improvement program, which the 
major component of that is the resurfacing program. Um, and as a result of this additional revenues, um, it's expected to reduce our paving cycle from what was 38 years down to 22, which is still nowhere near what we need, but it was all we had, all the state of Ohio made available to the counties to, uh, to put in place uh, last, last summer. And so when you look at our 400 plus miles of road in Claremont County, um, there's a deficit of $2 million to uh, get those uh, roads on a paving cycle that would match up with uh, what we would consider to be industry standard. So we'll move on to gas tax. Quite not really sure what to say about this slide. Um, it's one thing when I have 70% of my revenue no increase for 17 years and then you couple that with the fact that you have a 30 percent revenue source actually decreasing so we we have 2.3 million dollars came in in 06 and we have about ten thousand dollars less money that we received last year um, it's clearly not population if you go back a couple slides we've got 40 almost 45,000 more registrations it's not population um, and it's not an accounting error. Um, the reality is, is that the, the, the two, twofold, you know, to go, we're in our 14th year of, of, of 28 cent gas tax. So we've gone 13 years with no base increase to the gas tax to a 30% of our revenue source. Uh, and it's actually decreased. It's not flat, it's negative. Um, this is a state only. Obviously, there's a gas tax that's collected federally, but we're talking about revenues that come out of uh, the state of Ohio. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss, quite frankly, uh, with this one. Uh, if, if this is not an indication that, you know, the, 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 the funding mechanism, again, go back to the fundamental assumption and perception that there is an adequate amount of money allocated from the resources that that Joe taxpayer pays to fund our roads and bridges uh, th this is you know we can we could probably argue over the word adequate and sufficient amount of money but if you go 14 years and you're and you're less revenue so talk about this upcoming gas tax increase um, albeit maybe a day late and a dollar short. Um, it's here and it's what we have to work with. I'm, I'm generally a glass half full guy. So um, while I think it's, it's, it's healthy to understand how we got to where we're at um, so we can try to uh, move forward and fix these, these issues or, or certainly deal with these issues, uh, we're certainly very grateful. But again, um, this 1.5 million is a is an expected number. We'll hope we're hopeful that that will hit that number. Um, make, but the biggest issue is that again, it's there's no index. And so while we sit here today in 2019 and say this is great, 1.5 million, history has proven to me that this issue, unless something major happens, is not going to get revisited for another 10 to 15 years. I mean that's that's just the track record of the of the legislatures that are in charge of this. So we have to deal with again a flat, hopefully at least a flat. I mean if we if we continue to go negative, I just I I don't know what we're going to do. And so um, while this is not intended to give a, a super deep dive on our bridges, Commissioner Painter, um, there are a few facts that are are, are important and relative. We have. 40, over 40% 40 of our bridges are over 50 years old, which is the uh, standard useful life uh, for bridges. We have 416 bridges. We got them, uh, 45 of them have a load restricted. Um, and so, you know, coupled along with the bridge program, we have other things to do and, and, to, and to manage within our road program. And, and one of the issues that's probably the most notable is our as our susceptibility to landslides with our topography that exists in Claremont County. 
and currently we have 13 roadways that are being uh, affected currently by landslides. So if you look at the, the additional revenue needed uh, on an annual basis, and again, this isn't 2019 dollars. This is not indexed or um, any kind of number like that. We're looking at three million to replace uh, our deficient bridges and to deal with our landslide situation. So kind of wrapping round and third and heading for home here. Um, you know, we two and a half million for our road and another two and a half million in today's dollars for our bridge program. So the million and a half that we have additionally coming in um, is, is going to help, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's, only, it's only partially what we need. Um, and when I look at the road program and the bridge program, while we made good strides to get the road program from, tw from 38 to 22, you know, my bridge program, when I look at those two, someone, it may not be convenient, it may not be the greatest thing to drive on a, say, a pothole filled road, but, I, but when I compare that over the safety of the motoring public with bridges, and we had recent, a recent failure of a bridge, um, you know that the the additional million dollars is going to be allocated you know again to deal with our bridge program so that leaves us you know short um, you know several million dollars so as far as you know as far as um, you know next steps moving forward um, you know obviously I think we've shown a pretty strong case for the, the need for additional revenue um, just to try to keep pace with with uh, with inflation and and the cost. I mean, and again, I, I I I don't know what the number is. I know it's not zero, and I know it's not negative in terms of a percent increase. You know, per year, um, we could argue about you know what is appropriate and what's adequate. Some counties have added road levies county road levy I know Miami Township just did a township road levy some counties have allocated portion of their sales tax for highway um, highway improvements uh, don't quite know what the answer is um, I, I know that the system that we have is fundamentally flawed and um, we while we have a little uptick as we sit here today in 2019 every year that goes by um, you know, and we're, 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 we, we see it, we see it in the bids, we see it in our estimates, we see it in our um, cost of goods and services. So um, I don't know if there's any, um, you know, I guess one last thing I would say relative to, you know, all of this, you know, this assumption that adequate funding, and there, there is a responsibility on the office holders that, that are receiving that money, that they're properly spending that and being efficient. Um, I'd be happy to answer, you know, questions, but I know one of the things that comes up quite a bit is, well, what's your payroll look like over that time frame? And I can tell you that since I've been in office, we're down uh, 11 people. Uh, we've we've re reduced the force by 11 people. Um, and uh, this was a slide from the previous, one of the previous, uh, uh, this is information from the slide, but in 05 our payroll was 3.6 million and in 2017 it was 4.3 which represents slightly over one per one and a half percent increase over that uh 13 year period and what's so, the total budget of the operation is it 11 million it's around 10 you know our it's around 10 million yeah and so we've i've done everything in my power to control costs um i can't you know, uh, in terms of expenses, control expenses, um, and we've done everything. But I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm out of tricks. I'm out of options. Uh, I'm nothing up my sleeve, in terms of of leveraging dollars. Seventeen years for seventy percent of my revenue is 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 a is a is a big ask, and we've been able to do it. I know we got great staff. They've been uh, wonderful, very creative thinkers very bright minds um, but um, it's a it's a real problem it's a real issue um, so I mean obviously we're advocating for additional funding and I know there's been some talk and some discussion about potentially repealing some things um, 
that quite frankly would be devastating if, if that were to happen. Um, and, well, and those numbers, those numbers would, you know, we would, that you would see the, all those numbers that we're improving on would just all of the ground, all the legwork, all the uh, progress that we made, we would take, you know, giant steps backwards. And that was one of the reasons, Pat, that we asked you to come over and talk to us because we did, we did have that discussion. The discussion really surrounded about when we did the $5 license plate fee, we didn't know that they were going to come right behind it with the gas tax. With everything that you've said here today, um, what's the path forward? I, I mean, let's just get it right out there on the table. We're not going to get any more money. State's right. not going to get any more. Do we stop funding the TID and we use that money to fix the roads in Claremont County? I mean, what do we do? I mean, we can't, we can't continue to lobby, lobby tax to the taxpayers of Claremont County and then not fix the roads. And, and my concern is that we need to fix these roads. I think, um, Pat, answer that or do you want to? Oh, you can share it to your comments. The, the real problem is that sitting here today, the money looks good and we'll be able to do a lot of good things with it. But as you know, uh, Commissioner Painter, in 10 years with no indexing, where, where are we going to be? That's that's the real hurdle. Right. So it's it's not it's not a question of what can we do. It's how long can we do it? Right. You know, and you know, as Pat mentioned, the legislature in ten years is going to have to revisit. Well, and let's talk. Let's the, talk about before before the five years. Let's, let's talk yeah. about what the state did. You know, is that our path forward? The state stopped doing projects. Yeah. You know, and they backed off and they put their money against, you know, the road repair. I mean, we well, we typically as commissioners put, what, a million dollars, Suki, a million three? We have a commitment of a million three, and a majority of that right now is coming from the red. Right. We, we put a million three into the TID. I know you take a million dollars out of your budget. Miami Township puts 500000 in. Um, I think Union so, Township so, puts a hundred. Right. I mean, that's our shortfall. So, that's so, the money right. that'll get the roads fixed. To me, where it really comes back to is that as a fundamental question and debate that we have over adequate. If 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 folks and I'm not disagreeing that there's a limit to what, but I think to me, if 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 folks understood that that the current funding mechanism. I mean, I'm not, I'm not disregarding any amount of tax that are, they're currently paying. And I know no one wants to talk about additional, additional increases in, in fees or taxes, user fees or whatever you want to call them. But the reality is, is that those two sources, they're it. And I don't think most people would, if they fully understood the facts, could could correlate and can reconcile in their mind that going 13, 14, 17 years without an increase is 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 a recipe for something that's going to work. Right. So, to me, I mean, again, to me, we gotta we gotta deal with. There's there's, there's there, you're you're really getting back to the issue is what what do we do? Right. Do we do we sit back and do we just do we stay the path? with knowing that in five or 10 years that we're gonna be right back into this problem? Or do we do like what some other counties have done and, and, go, and go above and beyond? Um, but, but, but communicate that and, and acknowledge what it is, what our problem is. Because I mean, I understand that general public doesn't want just to increase fees, taxes, user fees, just because, but I think this is a pretty compelling problem. It's a pretty pretty compelling situation that we're dealing with, in terms of of re it's a, it's 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 not you know it's a revenue problem. It's not it's not a spending problem. But it's we a have revenue to problem. also we have to also understand if the Fed raises gas tax and and they're talking about they, that, they are and they that are happens again. That's not going to make it any easier for us to get it. No, no, no. None of, none of these increases that because you know what happens is is that they kick the can down until it can't be kicked any further and then they make an increase which again 10 10 and a half cents is not an insignificant increase but when you when you correlate that back to 14 years it's nowhere near what you know i think me just took my engineer hat off and put the Claremont county taxpayer hat on i certainly would rather pay a user fee that would go up 
you know, incrementally over the years versus, you know, you wait until it's a, it's just a disaster. And then all of a sudden now there's a, a fairly large, you know, increase. And and you and you would and you would really know, and you probably will notice it. Um, so, I think we've got, like you said, I think in the short term, um, you know, the additional revenue is going to help. You know, in the next, you know, five years, we're going to see a lot of of we're going to see that that delta. We're going to make some headway, but if if something isn't changed in the next three to five years, then all of the headway that we made is going to be anticipated with cost increases and, 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 and inflationary factors, and we're going to be right back where we're at. I mean, I think I know for a fact that the committee that looked at state gas tax and what the recommendation was, it was way more than 10.5 cents. Um, that's what they settled on. And I understand it's a political world that we live in. Um, and I know the goal was uh, more of a long-term fix, which is challenging for for politics to do a long-term fix because they want to show progress during their time frame um, and so you know the hope is that they'll they'll honor their word and that this is a you know I think the governor was looking for a 10 10 plus year fix that's why that was a higher number and so I think we're at you know five to you know inside 10 years um, is what they would hope to come back and revisit this. Whether they do or not is yet to be seen. So um, so we can certainly talk about some of these other things. I know they're, they're it's, it's, you're right, it's an additional burden on, but I don't know what other choice we have. We, we, either, we either try to deal with some things on our own and make the situation better for the folks of Claremont County, or we don't. The way I see it is we've got a bump. We've got $2.4 million. Part of that's 19.20. For right. sure, we'll get 2.4. Sure. And so we're going to end up catching up a lot, I think, on bridges and roads. Uh, but uh, as we go out, we'll be in the same right. situation we are now, right. 10 or 20 years from now. Um, the other thing is, I think the Transportation Improvement District is very important, and we probably shouldn't stop funding it. I would agree. Because it helps us with economic development. We can't expect economic development without improving our roadways. And generally, the county engineer's role is to maintain what we right. got. Correct. Don't add stuff extra. Correct. And I think the Transportation Improvement District has allowed us to add special new things uh, that really have enhanced economic development. So uh, I think we've got a, a bump coming. Right. Uh, and we'll be catching up a lot, but uh, as we get further out, it'll be less, it'll, we'll be back in the situation we're in now. We, we were in Correct. prior to this. <clears throat> well, and, and I think your comments were absolutely correct, Commissioner Humphrey. I mean, the fact that, you know, economic development obviously drives, you know, transportation drives the economic development of any, any county. You know, we all get that. But by the same token, you know, I mean, some of the information that you presented here today shows that, you know, we have increased in bridges. You know, we had 393, now we have 416. You know, we have increased in miles of road that we take care of. Everything we build, we have to take care of. And there just comes a time when, you know, I'm, I see the rock in the hard spot. I mean, what do you do? You know, is it um, <clears throat> looking to the taxpayers? That's probably not going to be there. You, you manage with what you got. And if you're putting money into another area, you got to look at that, you know. Well, just, uh, just to follow up on that. Uh Commissioner Humphrey said today the TID has built $160 million worth of improvements to the mm -hmm. infrastructure in County. Sixty-five percent of that is federal and state grants that we were really only able to get because of that funding source. Right. And when you look at Ohio, we're a donor state when it comes to federal gas tax. In other words, what we pay and give to Washington 100 percent doesn't come back to Ohio. Mm -hmm. So the best way for us as a county to compete for those federal dollars was through the TID. And you could easily make the argument that 50 to $60 million that we've got over the last 10 years, we wouldn't have been able to. Right. 
So that's a big, uh, good point. Big plus right. We get more of our money back that way. We wouldn't be able to do it. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other conversation or comments? Good. <coughs> Thanks, Pat.